Hey guys, we're in the Brooklyn Navy Yard and it's a pretty cool view we've got in the background there. We've got the Manhattan Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge in the background, Freedom Tower, this awesome huge boat right here. We were looking up at this escape submarine. Just imagine like the thrill it would be dropping in uh, into the ocean if there was an emergency. Of course, the focus here is the Gazelle Avenue C8. Wonderful little bike. Um, you know, Gazelle is, They've got this Royal Dutch recognition thing going on because they're over 100 years old. I think they, they celebrated their 125th anniversary recently. Um, one industry from each category is recognized in the Netherlands for being a, you know, a leader that's trusted, that doesn't have any violations, and, and these guys got it. So the Royal Dutch Gazelle designation, they review it every five to 10 years. So it's something they have to keep up on. And I think that says a lot about the bike. Before we even get into the, the specs and stuff, this is higher quality. And one of the first things I always notice is just, you know, how, how beautiful these frames are. So this is like Saturn blue matte. It's sort of a metallic blue when you, when you look at it in the sun like this. And you can see that even the rear rack is matched. It's got those nice big pannier blockers, triple bungee cords. So you can use that right out of the gates. Just put a box on there, a basket, or maybe a newspaper or something. You're gonna be able to hold it down securely. And then we've got this chain case right here. And it's also a little sparkly. It doesn't match perfectly, but it's definitely color matched and it completely encloses the chain. So you're not gonna get your, your pant leg or your skirt or dress greasy and snagged on the chain. There's only one sprocket up front, I believe it's 38 teeth, and then another sprocket in the rear, about 18 teeth. So the chain really doesn't bounce. You don't you don't hear it. It's not as noisy as uh, electric bikes that have a cassette in the back with multiple rings, because this has an eight speed internally geared hub. It's a Shimano Nexus Inter 8. Shifting this, pretty easy. Got a grip twister right here with a little window so you can see which gear you're in. I'm in gear two, so one would be the easiest. And you can even shift it at standstill. So that's kind of fun. If you imagine you're about to get on and maybe you left the bike in a really hard gear, well, you could shift down to make it easy before you start. So I like that. It's pretty intuitive. This bike is very approachable. Uh, you can even see that in these Magura HS11 hydraulic rim brake levers four fingers, okay? So you can really grab hold of this and pull hard. They've got that little screw right there so you can adjust the reach without a tool. That means you can bring the levers in or put them out. I think that's especially relevant on this model right here. This is the small. It does come in three frame sizes. So 45 centimeter, 51 centimeter, and 57 centimeter. And with these 26 inch wheels, it brings the whole bike down closer to the ground. A lot of times city bikes and stuff, they'll have like 700C, which is 28 inches. So yeah, you know, you're taking off a couple inches. It brings the, it brings the axle down closer to the ground. These are 26 by 1.75 diameter. So they're a really good balance of comfort, stability, that's the thickness, uh, and efficiency and lightweight. And that's, that's the thin side. So it's kind of right there in the middle running these Schwabi Marathon tires with Performance Line Green Guard. That means they've got some puncture protected liner. They've also got a reflective sidewall stripe. That's that silver band. So if cars are shining their lights towards you from the side, they're gonna see these big bright circles. And that's, for me, that's pretty important, pretty relevant. It's also got a decent PSI range on this. So depending on your weight, you can drop it down a little bit, 45 to 70 PSI. Sometimes when I try these bikes, they're set up for demo events and they're, they're way up. They've got the tires extra full because they want to be able to accommodate a heavier rider without squishing that tube and maybe even causing a puncture. But when you buy the bike, I mean, I only weigh 135 pounds. It's nice to be able to lower that and have a tire that's capable of a, a good range of tire pressure. So anyway, looking at the front here, it's relatively smooth, it's kind of a hybrid tire. You've got a little bit of traction going on, but this is predominantly urban setup. Quick release on the front wheel. On the rear, we have 10 millimeter, like a, an axle with nuts. And again, that's because of the internally geared hub. I don't see a lot of quick releases on these, in part because you have to adjust it uh, for tightness. So see how there's a, a bolt right here? You can kind of bring the whole hub back and create tightness on that chain. That makes the rear wheel a little bit more difficult to service. But again, you've got these nice Schwabby Marathon tires that aren't gonna go flat as frequently. Still good to check the tire pressure every once in a while before you go for a ride, make sure that they're not getting too low. That's one way to prevent flats. And then look at that nice big silver uh, rim wall. 
you can see that up here there's the, the rim brake, that's the HS11 from Magura. It's got those traditional looking pads that squeeze in. You get a good mechanical advantage squeezing the rim versus a disc brake. And because it's got that internally geared hub in the middle, I think that's part of the reason they do the rim brakes because it, it, it just, it declutters the center here. We've got the drivetrain, we got the brakes. Versus a lot of mountain bikes, they'd have a derailleur and sprockets and a disc brake. So anyway, that's, that's kind of what comes to mind for me. We've got an AXA Defender. That's a cafe lock, so you can slide this little lever and a, a bar goes through. We're gonna get back to that later. Miranda crank arms. These are 160 millimeter, which is relatively short. The standard is 170, and I think that's because we're on the smaller frame size. I can't confirm it, but I'm, I'm guessing that the, the larger frame sizes are gonna have slightly larger crank arms to give you um, a little bit of a slower and more leg extension on your, on your pedaling strokes. Gazelle banded pedals, SKS plastic fenders, really nice stuff. Integrated lights, so this is a Bush and Miller. Up T, it's aimable, and we've also got an integrated rear light. So both of these are running off the main battery pack, which is right here. About 5.8 pounds on that battery, and the capacity has been raised. So this is 36 volt, 14 amp hours. That's about 504 watt hours. The old standard was like 36 volt, 11 amp hours. So it's you know significantly higher capacity, which is going to give you good range. The display has an estimate, and it was saying something like you know 40 to 70 miles. Of course, it depends on the terrain, your weight, and all that. But that's that's pretty phenomenal. A lot of electric bikes can only go 20 to 25 miles at the highest level of assist. Part of the reason this is so capable is because it's using the very efficient Shimano Steps E6000 mid motor. Okay, now Shimano has the E8000 for mountain bikes and it puts out more torque. This one puts out up to 50 newton meters of torque. Again, efficient, lightweight, compact, really hidden right here, especially behind that uh, chain case that we were looking at. Here's the other side. You can see it a little bit better, more pronounced. So great motor system, brings the weight pretty low and center on the ground there. Uh, the, the battery, you know, it's, it's up high, it's in the rear but they did that so they could really free up the frame right here. And just look at that, it's it's extra like low and wide. So it's not gonna be a problem for most people to just raise their leg a little bit, step over. And if you do happen to bump the frame, they've got this nice rubber protection. And that's just very thoughtful. So coming back to the engineering on these, I feel like Gazelle does a great job. And the price point on this bike is $29.99. So very reasonable, especially when you consider their two-year comprehensive warranty, you know, you're getting great service, and a lot of times you're buying this from a dealer, a reputable dealer. I'm here with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes. How's it going, man? Doing well, yeah. It's fun to check these out with you, and you know, we've been studying this at your shop, like looking up all the stats and stuff, because it's a relatively new one for the US market. Um, and yeah, I just, I was really impressed with the price point. Gazelle seems to be offering a lot here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've been doing a lot more in the U.S. lately, and they have a lot more products coming in, and, and uh, I think they do a great job. I mean, you know, as, as you mentioned, the, the frame, the colors, the design, and really that complete package works out pretty well. Yeah, um, from a marketing perspective, I mean, so, you know, there's, there's always like two sides to the story. This is a great bike, so it's, I, I think it's kind of hard to go wrong with Gazelle, and that's part of the Royal Dutch thing I was saying. It just usually means you're spending a little bit more. But from a marketing perspective, this is designed to be approachable, highly adjustable. You've got that tool-free adjustable angle stem. You've got the new Shimano display. It's transflective, it's big, it's bright. You've got the, the bell, the ergonomic grips from Ergon with lockers. You've got the hydraulic rim brakes. You've got the, I mean, it, even this little suspension right here, this is kind of a mixed bag for me. It's 30 millimeter travel, but it, it just didn't, it didn't go very much. Maybe I'm, I'm kind of a lightweight rider. Uh, maybe it needs to break in a little bit. It definitely took the edge off of hard hits, but this suspension seat post was much more satisfying along with that Celery Royale gel saddle. So, you know, coming back, they've got the frame lock, they've got the, the great Shimano Steps motor system, internally geared hub. The, there's a ton of things. It's easy to market this bike and be like, it's amazing. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, I think it, I think it really is. I think in coming back to the weight, I, I guess I haven't said it, but it's like 52 and a half pounds. Uh, for a bike with integrated fenders and lights. Yeah, it's definitely not bad at all. Um, yeah, and I yeah, I think it's just you know, really like low maintenance, good looking bike, yeah. great for short riders, tall riders, you know, very approachable as you said. I think that's 
that's a nice feature to it. Well, and the low maintenance piece is, uh, is a good call out. I was saying this doesn't have a derailleur. So if the bike tips, there's, it's, there's a lot less to get damaged. These internally geared hips can be finicky. There are times where I'm like, I'm shifting and it, it, it doesn't click immediately into gear. I think it's sort of a self-protection thing where it's waiting for you to kind of ease off a little bit. This motor does not have shift detection like some of the Bosch motors, but I don't think that's as relevant when you have an internally geared hub with that protection mechanism I was describing. Um, also, some of the, you know, so right now I'm discussing like, what did I notice that could be improved maybe? I love that they have a rack, you know, and they've got this, this blocker and this pannier rod right here. It's very capable, but what they don't have is bottle cage bosses. And I feel like there was plenty of room. It doesn't mean you have to use them, but there's certainly those moments where it'd be nice to reach down and have a folding lock or a mini pump or a bottle and not have to have a backpack or a pannier. So I feel like that's one area. Again, the, the frame is, is super beautiful, nice smooth welds, even these cutouts right here so you can get to those wires. And I think that's part of the, the weight savings and why this bike is light. We are looking at the size small too. So imagine this bike's 53 pounds, still pretty good in my opinion. Nice adjustable length kickstand over here, but I don't love where it's positioned. It's right in the middle versus being a little bit towards the back. And that's because a lot of times I'll get my bike out of the garage and I'll be backing it up with the kickstand down and look at that it collides right there and so now i have to kind of walk the bike forward and stand on one foot while i lift the pedal and get that get that kickstand stowed okay so that's it's kind of a minor gripe and then there's a little bit of frame flex because this is a deep step through wave frame when you're riding it you do notice there's a little bit of flex like if you really turn the bike hard you can feel it vibrate there we go you can even see it a little bit and that's the case with most of these wave frames it's it's not a it's not uncommon, but it is a gripe that I want to call out until we come up with some carbon nanotube, super stiff frame material. I think this is still pretty good. It's aluminum alloy. And then there's that, that frame lock. I was saying that that's nice to have, but there, it, there, the usability of it is a little bit awkward. So I can't pull the, the key out right now, right? Because it hasn't been locked. But in order to lock it, I need two hands. I need to like go over here and I need to twist this and then I need to slide that there we go, thanks Chris. Slide that down and then I can pull the frame. Okay, so now the bike is locked and maybe in the Netherlands that's a good thing, like always lock your bike, but it's a two hand process. And personally in the United States, like I I just don't, I don't know if I would use that every time. And yet if I if I left the key in, now I'm vulnerable. Someone could steal the battery with the, so it's like, it's just a little bit of an extra thing. It'd be nice if you could pull this key out, but I, I suppose, you know, if you if you could twist it and pull the key out, that would make sense. I wouldn't want the key to just fall out on its own. So it's it's a minor consideration. I'm gonna go ahead and have Chris pull out the battery. Thank you. And this battery pack is is really nice. So we're seeing like 5.8 pounds, 36 volt, 14 amp hours. You'll notice the plug design right there. That's a little bit different than the plug design in the battery mount. So. You can charge this battery on or off the frame, but you actually need a special little dongle adapter. And that's it right there. So see, this is what plugs into the battery, and this is what plugs into the frame. And that's a little inconvenient. I mean, it'd be nice if they used the same plug design, but what's really inconvenient is that there's no leash. There's no, like, if this just, like your gas cap on your car, you know, a lot of them have that little leash so that they're, they're always with your car, you don't set it down and forget it. I feel like this could use the same sort of uh, extra little feature, the thoughtful design. I put this on here and I stuffed it in my bag and then when I pulled the charger out, it fell off. So it's not like it even clicks in really well. Maybe if there was like a more of a secure click type of thing, that would help. The charger's pretty awesome in terms of uh, output. It should charge quickly, it's four amps, but it's a little bit heavier and larger. This is 2.3 pounds, whereas a lot of other chargers I see are 1.7 to two pounds. So Shim Shimano chargers have always been a little bit big. Um, but anyway, the battery is, is sleek, it's relatively compact. It's got that LED charge level indicator built right into it, which is nice. Um, some of the older E6000 electric bikes had, uh, it was like a, you know, you had to press this power button. Chris, will you go ahead and push that the rest of the way in? I don't want to tip the bike. There we go. So it's it's in, then we pull the key out like this. Anyway, some of the uh, some of the older Shimano bikes, you actually had to to press that little button before you could turn the the bike on. That was like the power switch. That's not the case with their new 6000 display. So maybe it's a good chance to to jump up to that. I'm gonna go ahead and put these keys back into the frame lock, and when I do that, you're gonna see it 
there we go. See it kind of pulls back, the bike is ready to go. So I'm up here at the display panel, ready to go. Hold the power button for a few seconds and it lights up, says Shimano Steps. This is transflective, so it's it's very easy to read, even in harsh light like we're in right now, really bright. And we're in the inverted color, so white text, but they can flip it and you can have black text. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. We're back up here at the cockpit, relatively clean, easy to reach buttons right over here, and then that nice beeping sound to let you know you're interacting. You can turn that off, which I'm a huge fan of. Nice fun bell, really pleasant, kind of a happy sound. You're gonna get the clock, uh, battery infographic with percentage, so it's highly accurate. Or, well, accurate, it's highly precise. So that's much better than a lot of the systems out there. They just have like five or even 10 ticks. Percentage is my favorite. Speed, miles per hour right now, you can switch that to kilometers per hour pretty easily. And then down here, right now it says off, but if I arrow up, eco, normal, and high. And of course, high is where you get that up to 50 Newton meters. Top speed on this bike is 20 miles per hour. It's a class one electric bike. In fact, I think they've even got the sticker, class one, 250 watts. That's what you need in California now for electric bikes. You know, when you're riding, if, if someone questions you about it, you can say it's class one and, and uh, that'll help you be allowed to ride on more trails and stuff. And then timer down here. As you press this black box, it, it goes through some of the other readouts, so. Uh, average speed, max speed, distance, odometer, range, and range is really cool. So in addition to that battery infographic that was available a second ago, range estimates how far the bike thinks you can go in the current level of assist with the current battery capacity and then based on your riding. So up to 47 miles on high. So I was being a little bit conservative a minute ago when I said 40 miles, you know, this is saying 47. You know, and the battery is at like 98% right now. So that that's that's pretty fantastic. And if I arrow down to normal, it says 58 miles, eco 65 miles. So, you know, again, maybe up to 65, 70 miles per charge, depending on some of those other factors. This display also has a lights button. So when I press that, you get the little light icon and the lights turn on and they run off the main battery. It's fantastic. Uh, but one of the things you don't have up here is there, I didn't see like a little, you know, micro USB port or anything. So some of the other systems now are having a place where you can plug in your cell phone or your music player and you can tap into the battery. That would be nice to have, but you know, this makes it a little bit simpler and maybe you don't get water and there's there's less, uh, it's less complex. I don't know, that's something crossed my mind. If you want to get into the settings, you hold the up and down keys for a couple seconds here. And now you're, you're in the settings. It's really fantastic. Clear, set your clock, start mode, backlight, brightness, beep. So that's where you can turn it off. If I wanted to, I would go press the black box, go to off. Super quiet now. Units, language, font color. So let's switch that. So instead of white, we go black. Now look, like the whole thing is, is pretty bright. And maybe that's easier for you to read. Uh, just auto RD protection re reset. That's like rear derailleur if you have like a electronic shifting setup. So that's it, exit. Now we're back with, with just kind of the main readout. If I keep pressing that black box, it changes to give me all of those range estimates in one, one quick view. So just a wonderful display. This is becoming one of my favorites. It's narrow, but it's, it's easy to read with, with your up, if you're up high looking down like this. I'm gonna turn it off for a second because another neat feature is it's removable. So look at that. If you're someone who's commuting and you have to park outside in a rough area, you can take this display with you maybe even take the, the battery pack off with you. You could charge them inside. You got the charger at your desk. It's just, it's fantastic. It's great setup in my opinion. So I think that's, you know, that's a pretty good overview. Chris, I wanted to invite you to just share anything else you know about Gazelle or, you know, why do you guys carry them? Sure, uh, so Gazelle is actually distributed by the same company that distributes Focus, Kalkoff, and many other. Faraday. Uh, yeah. Faraday now, so it's the Pond Group, which is actually in Europe. It's a major automotive uh, distributor, and now they're, they're really investing heavily in e-bikes. They really believe in it, and that's definitely aligned with our belief and focus. Um, so, you know, it's been, it's been great working with them, and we're excited about the future, and I think they have a clear vision for uh, mobility and and things of that nature and, and value and value 3, yeah. Bucks. yeah absolutely so you know it's it's pretty cool and 
And to work with a, a brand like Gazelle that has such a rich history of quality and, and you can tell in a product like this, there's a real attention to detail that-, well, that I, know, no, I'm surprised, okay, because Again, your shop, we're in Brooklyn, Propel yeah. Bikes. You've been in Long Island and Brooklyn for the past four or five years. I mean, is that right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and for a while, you've been kind of like, well, we're, we're pretty much sticking to Bosch. But this is not Bosch. Right, right. Okay, so what are you thinking? It's you, They I did mean, a good enough job. You think it's reliable? and this, this product's really compelling. I think Shimano is definitely investing more and more in the U.S. Um, I will say that we, we do have a, a big focus on Bosch. You know, Gazelle does a lot of bikes with Bosch as well. I think I see one over there. What is yep. that, the NL? Yeah, so that's yeah, the that's... NL. It's a, a heavy duty bike. It has the ability to carry quite a bit on the front rack as well as the rear rack. And it's just uh, pretty solid overall. Huh. And then there's some other bikes like the Arroyo is pretty popular and they're, they're doing a lot more things for next year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean the Shimano system, I think it's a good system. I think that uh, it's it's pretty solid. I think, you know, Shimano has, has a pretty good uh, established dealer network throughout the US. And some of these, these are the things that we look at as a shop because we're really focused on long-term reliability, yeah. serviceability, these sort of things. So I think that it has a lot of those elements, that, you know, similar to like what a Bosch system does. And, and, and we are really appreciate that. Okay, well, that's great feedback. Uh, maybe you can babysit the charger and I can hop on here for a second. Sounds good. Take this around. So yeah, uh, just approaching the bike. Get that kickstand stowed. We're pretty much ready. I'm just gonna hop on. We're in we're in off assist right now. I'm gonna turn it up to high, and I'm gonna start in gear level three, and just go for it. There we go. I'm kind of hitting my the top RPM, not giving me a whole lot more speed at this point. So I'd need to shift gears. You know, mid motors are like that. You, you need to shift gears thoughtfully in order to empower the motor, especially a motor like this. That's it's meant to be lightweight and efficient more so than the high power. Um, also, you know, the fork angle on this, it's, it's a little bit more raked out and it gives you this nice flowy feel. Feels pretty stable. You can ride no hands pretty easily. There we go. Little bit of rattle going on there with some of the fenders you know they are plastic so they're not going to get bent out of place um, they're not going to rust like steel but there's just a little bit more jitter that can happen sometimes okay guys we're under the brooklyn queens expressway i wanted to show you the light because it's shady right here see how i just turned that on and off it's aimable seems to work pretty well and then i was hoping from this angle i could hit some bumps you could listen for fender rattle and maybe that, that front little suspension element. Again, it's only about 30 millimeters. It's not doing a whole lot. Uh, the fork is raked out. It's like a 70 degree angle. So it's a little bit more relaxed and stable than like a road bike that would be a little bit more vertical. from here even though you can't see it because of that nice chain case hopefully you can hear the motor and I'm just gonna ride around a little bit listen for how responsive it is I'm also gonna shift gears but you know that there hasn't been any mashing it's really smooth because of the internal internally geared hub and there's that nice rubber pad so you don't scuff up the frame heading to the Navy Yard to, to do some more filming.
brakes feel really smooth. They aren't locking up. Um, and those four finger levers give, give me pretty good leverage. Again, these are rim brakes versus disc brakes that I see on a lot of electric mountain bikes. And my hope is that from this angle, you'll be able to see that that seat post suspension, that's giving me most of the comfort, the gel saddle and the seat post. Um, you know, the tires are a little bit more narrow and that, that front suspension is pretty minimal and a little sticky. So um, this is doing a lot. down get a good start now we're up in one of the higher gears feels comfortable, smooth. There's a little bit of a like whining sound from this and most mid motors that I've tested out. Uh, but once you're up here, once you're sitting up high, it's, it's not so bad. Some of those frame shots, you can really hear it because you're mounted to the frame. But you know, all in all, this is, this is pretty sweet. So that's the Gazelle Avenue C8. Uh, for the full ride up, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun, ride safe. And thanks again, Chris. Thank you.